Okay, we're going to proceed on with public comments, and uh, we have a list of those who have, have uh, said they wanted to speak when they came in the room. It's not too late to add your name to the list over there by the door if you desire to speak. And first up, we've got uh, our good friend John Wiley. Okay. All right. Thanks, sir. We'll yield to uh, Gary Ball. I'm going to be part of that discussion also, but can I go ahead and make some comments now, or should I wait until that? Um, if you're welcome to do it, but if it's coming up next, right after public comment, so you might save it for that. If you so let let's phrase it this way: If you're here to speak about anything other than the next discussion topic, uh, that might be. Uh, Clara Ball, Jason Porter, Greg Sims, hope I pronounced that right, Jim Goodfellow, Tom Garrison, I know Al Brown's going to come up, and Joyce, uh, anybody want to speak, Joyce Wrinkle, anybody else want to speak on any other topic other than the discussion item tonight, Al? Come on up. So those folks' names I just called, you want to speak on the on an issue that's coming up on discussion, is that correct? Not Joyce, so. Okay, go ahead, Al. My name is Al Brown. I am the director of the Raytown Emergency Assistance Program, 9300 East 75th Street. That was the building that we just talked about. I am here to remind the community that REAP needs help to help people. If those of you who have already forgot how hot this summer was, think about people in your neighborhood who did not have power to turn a fan on. Not air conditioning, I'm talking about a fan because their power was shut off because they couldn't pay their bill. Think about the night when you go home and you take a shower, you get a drink of water. There are people in our community who do not have the luxury of having water come out of their faucet. Think about this winter when it's going to get cold and you're going to turn your thermostat heat on. There are people in our community at that particular time. There's thousands of people, greater school district of Raytown, who do not have gas now. It's okay now, but wait until October 31st, the first snowstorm, the first sleet starts coming down, and they're cold. You guys will all be nice and warm. They and their children will not be. I think we just, if you think about it this way, there are 60,000 people who live in the Raytown School District, 30,000 people who live in Raytown. If each and every one of you folks would give REAP $1 a month and one item of food a month, that would be $30,000 a month and 30,000 cans of food. Nobody would have their lights, their gas, their water shut off, or if they did, we could help them. Nobody would be hungry. There is actually no reason in this world that some child in the Raytown schools has to be hungry at night. None. And I contend if we don't take care of it, then we are to blame. There's a golf tournament coming up September the 24th to help that cause. The police department and REAP goes together to have, this is our fifth annual golf tournament. We'll raise lots of money, but we need teams. Just think, how can you have more fun than playing golf? Even if you don't play golf, I don't care. Just go out and try. Or just send money in. That's, that's more important. <laughs> don't show up. Just send a check. Um, but it's very simple. Don't think about doing that. Don't think about helping. Do it. There are people in this room who have been very big supporters of REAP. There are people in this room who haven't given a penny to any charitable organization as long as they've lived. And that's kind of sad. One story that says a little, two little girls waiting in line to celebrate one of the little girl's birthday. The mother, who was not very well off at all, had a nice feast planned for the girl's birthday. As she was in a checkout line, she put the food there, and all of a sudden she realized as the checker kept ringing it up, the bill was going to be far too large for her to pay. She had to take some of the food back. She became quite tearful. The little girl said, it's okay, um, it's okay. We'll still have a nice birthday party. There was a gentleman behind her who saw this happening. He became very upset. 
as it was a very sad tale. As he walked out to his car, he looked up in the sky and said, did you see what happened in that store? What are you going to do about it? That night, as he was asleep, he woke up because a big booming voice came from above and said, I did do something about it. I made you. Think about it. Help those people in your neighborhood because you have people in your neighborhood who do not have lights, who do not have gas, who do not have food to feed their child or children. So please, please help the Raytown Emergency Program so in turn we can help those in need. Thank you. Al, thank you for all you do. Okay, next is uh, Joyce Wrinkle. I'm just here tonight to um, represent my whole neighborhood. They didn't want to come, a lot of them, because they said it, I was wasting my time. I've talked to you about the parks problem, the bridge down at Miner Smith Park at 81st and Raytown Road and Ash. Um, we've got that somewhat under control. I appreciate Steve and yourself getting back to me and Mr. Lightfoot as well. Um, Steve has continuously called me and kind of kept on letting me know what was going on. I really appreciate that, Steve, a lot. Communication is a big thing to me. And our streets, the curbs have gone really bad. They're washing down in the corner. The streets have been repaired back in 2008 in spots. The public works never came back, took care of the asphalt that's been cut out. They were going to uh, remove that and repair it. That's never been completed since 2008. We've got the school district contact, make sure that the lanes of traffic are now open. Uh, we still have a little bit of an issue, but they're working on it. So that's all acceptable. But I just wish if we had ordinances in place that people would speak up, get these yards mowed, maintain, you know, their homes, their gutter coming off their homes, cars sitting in their streets and in their driveways that don't run, that have been there for years. You know, it, it doesn't take a whole lot. But if we're going to put ordinances in place, we need to follow through with them. And if people, thank you, thank you. If people do not want to take care of, you know, maintenance and stuff, then we've got to get in their pocket with the fine. And I hate that, but that's the way it is. And that's the ordinance, and we're not doing it. And if, you know, you don't want to start an argument with a lot of your neighbors, and you've got issues. We have public works. We have parks all over the place. We have police trolling. Why aren't they turning some of this stuff in? I don't mean they need to drive every street every day. But when they see things, and they're continuously around those areas. Cars are still sitting there. I know of places that cars are sitting in the yard, not even in the driveway. You know, I've been in Raytown for 54 years of my life. Same place, 81st and Raytown Road, not going anywhere. I want Raytown to get back to what it used to be. And if we're going to set standards, we got to follow them. We expect our kids to. And if we're going to expect our kids to follow, rules, regulations, standards, not break the law. Let's get together. Let's do something about it. And that's going to be speak up. And it's going to be, you know, you people here at the city, we've got ordinance. We need to give tickets, not warnings. Um, when the cars were parked on 81st and Raytown Road, where every so many feet, it says no parking any time. I called the police, the police would come over, they'd get them to move. Next day, same thing. So if they're going to continue to do it, break the law, give them a ticket. And so I'm just kind of asking for, you know, the city to pull together, everybody, not just the people here at the city hall, all the people sitting here, your neighbors. I mean, let's get Raytown back to what it used to be. Um, it's just not what it used to be. And we've got to get back there. We've got to get businesses back in Raytown. Um, you know, we've got too many buildings sitting empty. 
everybody's going to Lee Summit, they're going to Independence, Blue Springs. You know, I'm not going anywhere. I've invested 54 years of my life right here. It's where it's going to be, and we need help. Can't do it by myself, but we need some help. And I asked my neighbors to come tonight, and they said, why? It's a waste of time. The city's not going to do anything. That is very disappointing to me. So, you know, here I am speaking for my whole neighborhood. And it's all down 81st Street. It's ash up in our cul-de-sac. Everybody feels the same way. We've got a home in that area where there's like three families living there. That's fine. If they're going to maintain and take care of things and you park in your own driveway, that's fine. But if you're not going to maintain, you're not going to take care of, and cars are going to be sitting around in the street where the mailman can't even get to your mailbox, and the streets are blocked, and Steve, you happen to be there at a perfect time, there was no way at 4 o'clock one afternoon when Steve stopped by, when I called and Robert sent an email out for me, there was no way to get up or down our street. When Steve got ready to leave, he had to wait. You could not get through that street. We have sick people over there, um, not just elderly people that are ill. We have young people who are ill over there that could need emergency. We had a fire, too bad. And so I do want to uh, thank you and Steve and Mr. Lightfoot for getting back to me. And Steve, I, I just can't express enough how much I appreciate you keeping on top of letting me know what was going on. I really do. So I don't know what more to say, but um, got some problems in Raytown, uh, 67th and Raytown Road. The lot needs to be mowed and trimmed and sprayed for wheat. I mean, it, it's not really that hard to see. It's right on Raytown Road. So I know police, parks, and public works are out and about. They can jot it down on a notepad. So we need help. And I appreciate your time and thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wrinkle. Okay, would anyone else like to speak to the board tonight regarding any other item other than the public hearing items we have and the next discussion item coming up, which is on the one-way uh, street regarding Willow? Any other topic? Fair game? This is your chance to speak. <coughs> Andy? So that, so I don't miss you, I understand that uh, John Wiley, Gary Ball, Jesse Ball, Clara Ball, Jason Porter, Greg, I, I, for, I think it's Sims, I'm sorry, Jim Godfellow and Tom Garrison all want to speak on the discussion item coming up, is that correct? I just don't want to miss you here. Okay, Andy? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Board of Alder people. In case some of you have never noticed, there are two ladies sitting up here, but you call yourself alderman, and that's politically incorrect. I mean, they're alder woman, not alder men. So I think some terminology changes need to be made here. And also I'd like to mention that you're, you're speaking on Willow. One person brought up previously that there were two Raytowns. I didn't agree with that, but there are at least two Willows or maybe more than two Willows in Raytown. I'm speaking on another section of Willow, namely between 63rd and 67th Street. The street has been in disrepair for many years. In fact, Mahish, when he was on the Public Works Department, said it was failed. It's unsafe for pedestrians in places. It's narrow. It's used as a feeder street. It's too narrow for a feeder street. If cars park in on Willow, it's going to impede the traffic. So not only does Willow need to be repaired, but it's posted for a 35 mile speed limit. This is a residential area. It should be lowered to 25. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Okay, anyone else?